<laughs> Wait, I pressed record, right? I did, right? Did you? Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today we have Nadine and she is a mechanical engineer. So Nadine and I both got the government scholarship to study engineering in France. After getting the scholarship, we were both sent to this city in France called Tours. Mm -hmm. If you look it up, it's spelled T-O-U-R-S. Like you might yeah, like Tours. And in Tours, we learned French. Fun. We had intensive French language classes and we learned sciences and maths as well. Mm -hmm. So Nadine and I, I think like we came into the first year with different mindsets. like. I think you yeah. adapted a lot easy, easier like, compared to, to me. What, what was your mindset when you first came to France? Honestly, to be very, very honest, like when I got the scholarship, I, I guess I, I wanted to be an engineer, but I didn't even know what it was. I, I had a thing for maths and science, uh -huh. so I didn't. Ha I wasn't unhappy. I was very happy. That that was my mindset when I was in, when I just came. I, like we had a lot of work yeah. in the first year. After we got our results, then we got the scholarship. So we came to France when we were eighteen, yeah. without knowing French, and mm -hmm. we had to learn French and we had to learn maths, bio, electricity, mm. chemistry, mechanics. and mechanics yeah. <laughs> in in French. Yeah. And we had classes from 8 to 6 every single day, yeah. so it was a lot of work and tense. Yeah, like, I don't know, like, you told me you had an adoptive family and everything yeah. in your first yeah. year. Yeah. I was very lucky because mm. it was really um, coincidental. I just kind of, like, found a family that took care of me. Mm. I, I wanted to be with the French, so I went out there yeah. and I went out with the French people and I didn't... I, 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 I guess that's why I was very comfortable. I think what made it different, like, why... It was probably um, easier for you to adapt was because you went into it yeah. accepting yeah. accepting it. Whereas like I was done with sciences after SPM yeah. and I wanted to do like law or econs and suddenly like poof scholarship. Yeah. <laughs> and so like the first year was super hard because mm. I did not accept yeah. that you wanted you were doing engineering. Yeah, like, you yeah, still yeah. wanted to do something else. So that, like that's why I think it was probably easier for you in that aspect. Like it's yeah. easier going into yeah. this change yeah. having already accepted it from the beginning yeah. so basically like after our first year in france we had to choose if we wanted to go to an école d'ingénieur mm -hmm. or if you wanted to go to an eut and the difference being that um, eut is more hands-on and you already yeah. have to know what you want to do and eco is more general it's more uh, based on theory <laughs> okay then like what about after that so where did you go after that I, I did UTC for one year, but the problem was when I went there, I told you, like, um, I, I did know that the choosing the subjects part was very difficult. So I actually chose subjects for third year and fourth year students. I didn't know anything, and it was. So yeah, I, I went, so I left. So I left, and I did UT Jampé. <laughs> so after my first year, I went to an UT to do a technical degree in mechanical and, like mechanical and production yeah, well, engineering. Yeah, why did you pick mechanical engineering? Uh, so I think I choose mechanical because it's more general. It offers you the opportunity to do a lot of things after you do your mechanical. Yeah. You can do so many things. You can choose to either do the maths part or you can either choose to the do the coding part. Yeah. Went to an, so I took mechanical engineering because like, like she said, it's very general and I didn't really know what I wanted to do with engineering. Mm -hmm. So mechanical was like the option where you can have it all. So that, that's why I did it. What was your first impression on French maths? I enjoyed it actually. It was different. I mean, obviously, yeah. it's much different than Malaysian maths. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that's for sure. But like the French maths for me at the time when I when we first started, it was like heaven. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, oh my god! It was the complete opposite for me. Really? Look, suddenly there were so many alphabets in maths. Yeah. Well, the Malaysian maths is very direct. It's very hands on. My French maths, they go into the theory. Yeah, which yeah they need. They want to know why. Like everything yeah. is why, why, why. You yeah. have to always prove why, why, why. At first, I thought when I was when we were in Malaysia, like for me, oh, okay, this is cool. But like when I got to France, I got to know why. <laughs> it's like, whoa, that's <laughs> amazing, right? There was something that one of my classmates picked mm. up. So the professor had our maths results, mm -hmm. and he was like, "C'est pas terrible ça." Mm. And I was like, "Oh, so we did well." Oh, but, but, terrible. Terrible. <laughs> but apparently, "C'est pas terrible" means terrible. <laughs> France was like really sudden for me. Yeah, it was very short. Like, like short. Yeah, it was probably the hardest one year in my life, mm -hmm. I would say. So going to an EUT after that, yeah. like you know, it, it gave me a lot more time to to work at my own pace mm -hmm. and 
build up my confidence from my first year and everything. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I went to UTC. So after UT, I was at MSAM. So, Ecole Nationale Supérieure des Arts et Métiers, or Arts et Métiers Paris Tech. Generally, we both did our first year tour, and then we went to an UT for Mackenge, and then we went to like two different Ecoles. Mm -hmm. so two then, very good schools. Like, really good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, tell me about like, what's different about your school? Are there school that you can compare with this year? Okay, so it's an equal generalist. Um, so yeah, like the first two years, we don't have a choice on the subject. It's basically like imposed on us. So it's like each year, like first year and second year both, we have like a, a mechanical um, semester and then we have the electric, electronic um, semester. And also the and some ways different they say is that we can we can we have to change campus uh, at least once in the three years that we're there. Yeah. So that's the difference, I guess, with UTC. Yeah, like, okay, the main reason why I went to UTC is because, like, France loves putting their students through classes from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. And I did not want that. And UTC was one of the few schools in yeah. France where you could pick your subjects and you didn't have, like, classes from 8 to 6 every day. And, but that does not mean that you have it easier. It just yeah, means that you true. have to manage your time a lot better. <laughs> and free time is not free time. You, you, like, you have to stick to a strict schedule and everything. And because I did not really know what I wanted to do with mechanical engineering yet. I didn't know what I liked, but I knew what I didn't like. Yeah, and true. I knew I did not want to do, like, production. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the mecha schools in mm -hmm. France were like, you have to do yeah, you mecha have. and production. So that's why I chose you this year. We start class at 7 15 <laughs> and we added the school at like 5 45 or 6. Sometimes it can go on more than that right away. And and it was, yeah, we, we had class. But then the one thing that I liked about and some was that our classes were fixed, so we had the same class the entire year. Um, in UTC, because you pick your subjects, everyone has their own timetable, so you do not have like um, classes with the same people. It's sort of like an American school system. Mm, yeah. Um, in engineering school, we have this thing called like integration. Anti orientation in English. Yeah, right? orient yeah, orientation. <laughs> so, in they say the integration is like for one month. And what I like about it is it's sort of like Harry Potter. So, you have like four clans. You know, you do like a personality quiz and you choose your clan and then you have like your family, that clan. And so, you have to complete like a set of challenges over a period of like two weeks. And then the, the team that collects the, the most points wins the golden toilet bowl. It's literally a toilet bowl. <laughs> literally. But gold. There was even one day where they rented a bouncy castle. Oh. Like normally, integration, uh, it's like a one, it's like one month. And they even have like captured the flag. Oh, that's so cool. They, yeah, they normally have like captured the flag in the forest, but because of COVID. Oh, yeah, I did that. Did that. Yeah, I did that. It was so fun. I'm gonna join integration again for two. <laughs> So be because of COVID, like we only got to do it for three weeks before the school closed down and we were all like pushed into quarantine. But it was still really good. It was really because of integration that I could meet a few friends that I managed to keep throughout the semester. So that's like my integration in UTC. What about yours? I know like you have a huge history for it's very different. So because like um, my school is an ex maybe school kind of. And so we have a lot of Things that are very different out of school. So, as I said just now, like the fraternity part is very really strong. Yeah, we will have our own language. So, do you know how to speak that language? How do you say like bonjour? Sars. No, seriously. You arrive to school, you see all the second year students like with the hair and with the uniform and then looking at you really mean and then like <laughs> talking to you in another language that you're not even French and suddenly they're not even talking to you in French. You're like, what is going on? And then after three months, we had a baptism. We literally got baptized <laughs> and then we have, a, we have a family so each year, each person has a number attributed to them. But I was very lucky because I was, I am in 134, so we, we really formed this, this like relationship between mm -hmm. everyone and if we need help or anything, we always can go to them because they're really like a family to us. Mm -hmm. So that's like, that's a great thing in Ansa. How would you describe the, the people in Ansa? Uh, it's different than other schools because we're so, it's a fraternity, so we know everyone. Like in my coma, we're about 180, I think. And we have to know everyone. So during the integration, like you have to memorize the names of each person. So you have to know them. And you have, there will always be activities where you are with other people. Um, so you have to get to know them. Going to UTC, all the new people that I met, they were so open and they were so interested in meeting you. They would, you know, they're very warm yeah and that's pretty shocking because i think in 
the first three years in France, it's safe to say that we probably had an impression that French people were kind of reserved yeah, and true. you know cold. But like when he went, when I went to Utah, I was like everyone was just like friendly and you know they they're just so open and people are so nice and willing to help you. People are interested in getting to know you, and that's something that I did not feel during my first three years in France. Like, I think after three years, I finally felt like I belong. Yeah, you know? somewhere. Yeah, and, and that felt really. Nice. And are you learning? So I'm learning Spanish right now. Oh, do hablar un poco español? Well, basically, I always wanted to learn Spanish since I was young. Mm-hmm. So the moment I had the opportunity to learn it, I jumped on it like no questions asked. I took. I'm always taking German the, as my as my third language. Oh, oh yeah, uh, fourth language. And bisschen um, Deutsch auch. Ich habe Deutsch gelernt in die Schule. In die Schule. Uh, so I did. So I specialized in that modeling and simulation of medical structure. Six, so it's six months. I mean, there's 20 subjects in these three schools. Uh, four actually, because there's polytechnic as well. It was hard. Oh my god, it was hell. It was, it was hell. Like I'm not gonna lie. Like the. It was. I, I went through the, the most intensive six months of my life, literally working day and I sometimes I even got back home. Like I would stay, Central was open, the school was open, so I would stay back until like 2 3 am and then I would go out because the school was open, so anyway, so I would study there with my friends and like, like every day, and it was hell. I would cry, I cried the first two weeks, but I made it out alive. I, I, I passed all, I also passed everything, and I was like, oh my god, thank god. <laughs> if you could go back in time, uh, in your first year in France, like what would you change or what would you tell yourself? I feel like if I accepted things as it was mm-hmm. earlier, mm-hmm. things would have been easier for me. If I could change something, it would only be the time when I was at UTC. I was too confident with myself. So when I actually went to UTC and when I took those subjects of the third year and fourth year, I didn't even think to myself like, why are you you're so crazy? Like, what the hell? I just told myself, oh, I can do it. Like, But then I told myself, Oh, if you work harder, mm. you make it through. And I worked harder. I worked so hard and it didn't work. Not because I was stupid, but because I wasn't working right. And because obviously I didn't know how to do it. I didn't even know how the theory is in the thing because I haven't done other subjects before. So obviously I had a lot of ego at the time and I had too much confidence. So Nadine, if you're watching this, <laughs> to myself like, any choice you take is a good choice. I mean, any path you take is a good path. It's just different. But yeah. it's, it, will be, it will eventually work out for you. Ever since we first came to France, whatever decisions we've been making, yeah. which school you wanted to go to, which uni you wanted to go to, everything was like our yeah. choice. Yeah. And thankfully yeah. and luckily, things worked out the way we wanted it to yeah. work out. True. Yeah. Knowing that we left home at 18, yeah. basically, to learn a new language, be away from our family for one year, before we could go back. How, how did you cope with the stress and the homesickness? It sometimes just hits you, just strikes you like, shoot, like, yeah. I'm not with my family right now, you know, and yeah, it is, but then yeah, to cope with it, always I, I look at pictures, videos, I call them, yeah, and then you just like, and you just tell yourself, you know, you're doing this for them, and you know, you're working hard for your family, and it will work out in the end, I'll go back and see them anyway, yeah, just have to wait, you know. And I always like do a bit of countdown like, when I'm going back yeah. home. And I look at it, and I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm going home. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you, uh, when you're away from your family, you kind of feel like you feel more gratitude. Yeah, definitely. You definitely appreciate your family much more. I mean, your home, you appreciate Malaysia as well, like yeah. much more when you're away. Cause oh my God, the food. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, family, of course, but. <laughs> Well, so I only call my parents, um, I call my mom a lot and my uncles and my grandpa. I call my grandparents every weekend. Oh, really? Like, I I feel like talking to my grandparents every weekend is like the one thing that, you know, Mm -hmm. makes me feel safe. Yeah. Where you feel that connection to home. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously, my boyfriend has been there for me since the start, so. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, long distance relationship. (laughs) So that's all for today. I think it's. it's oh my god! Eleven. <laughs> that's why we both look like. I mean, I especially look like. Yeah, I am definitely one hundred percent a dick. I hope this um, video helped 
you guys have a clearer idea of UTC and, and some. <laughs> and if you have any questions, you can always like leave it down in the comment section. And if you like the video, then give it a comment.